Well, thank you everyone for sharing that with us. My name is Olivia Guidi. I'm an admissions counselor at the University of Rochester. Congratulations to you all for being admitted to the university. This is very exciting for us. Um, I'm joined today by some of my colleagues from Residence Life. Um, their names are Ashlyn, Dan, and Julianne. Um, they're going to be mainly running this session. I'm going to be kind of in the background to answer any questions you might have. Um, but today you're going to learn a little bit of information, have some time to get your questions answered, um, and get to learn a little bit more about the UFAR too. So uh, take it away, my Resley friends. Thanks, Olivia. My name is Dan Watts, and I am the Director of Residential Life at the University of Rochester. So again, congratulations to all of you potential uh, future Yellow Jackets. We hope that we can give you some information today about the University of Rochester and the experience of living on campus, uh, and that many of you will make the decision to come here. So again, congrats on your admissions, and I want to let my colleagues introduce themselves. Julianne? Hi, um, I'm Julianne Schnibby, and I am one of the associate directors um, in Res Life. It's nice to meet you all. And Ashlyn. And my name is Ashlyn Hudson, and I am one of the area coordinators here on campus at the University of Rochester. Um, I do oversee one of our first year buildings, so I hope to see some of you next year living in Lovejoy Hall. Great. Um, Julianne's going to keep an eye on the chat. So as people have questions when we go through our presentation, um, Julianne is going to log them. She may actually respond to some of them if they're simple chat questions. Um, and she may hold some of them until we get to our Q&A at the end. So uh, please do put your questions into the chat. Julianne's keeping an eye on that. And Olivia is also going to be watching the chat in case you have any admissions questions or questions about deposits, dates, deadlines, and the MyRoc platform. So we should have you covered if you have any questions. I'm going to hop on to screen share here. We have a brief uh, presentation that includes a short video. Uh, to get us rolling, and then we're going to probably have a half an hour or more for Q&A. So that's our plan for today, and let me do my, I told them I would do my old man disclaimer with technology, so let me try to do a screen share and make it happen. All right, here we go. Um, the video, I need to apologize. The beginning of the video, we do have somebody and she's outdoors and it's quite windy. So the sound is not terrific, but pretty soon she's gonna come indoors and the sound will be really good. Apologize for the lag here. Not sure what happened. Let me try again. Also have maintenance, custodial, and red light staff for your instance of running in. And lastly, the kitchen security are sitting in front of our residential hall. We have two security CAs on to turn it on to your Like I said before, you are run by the life of all of you and your system. There's something for everyone in our system today, so let's check them out a little more in depth. Welcome to the first year event. This is Jeff Lee and Julie. Friendly community is located near Rush Bay Live. 
everyone. My name is Peter and I'm an RA for the first year of Yale. So we're going to show you guys the CV room really quick. So you have pretty much two of everything. You have two beds and mattresses, two closets right over there behind us, two dressers, and then two chairs and desks. It's something that's easily just convenient and they are already accessible. So every room has their own access wall, which looks kind of nice because they don't have just a wet and wet light. Right over here on the desk, we have this little touch up here that has a light. So you can actually be studying in your own room without bothering your roommate and also not having to worry about going over to the library. The beds um, allow for different ways of personalizing your room. So you can do a couple different heights. This is going to be the tallest height other than lofting. And this is what they come with when you guys move in. We're going to take a look at a Genesee room really quick. So this is basically comparable in size to most of those um, first year rooms that we have on campus. This one's going to be a little bit longer as opposed to the ones in Sydney, which we see, which are a little bit deeper. Some other features on the hill include the CD Junior Room, a great lounge with games and TV, the seventh floor solarium with a great view of Brock Street, and a kitchen on every floor. Welcome to the first year tour, including Gilbert, Owen, and Turner's Hall. This traditional style area houses about 720 first year students, with potted books in the collegiate residential squad, close to Wilson Commons and Douglas Creek. The pot has a great TV feel in the heart of campus activity, so let's check it out. Hello, my name is Shikari Sari. I'm standing here on the first year body of Owen Holmes, and I'm going to show you a double bed. Rooms are pretty unique because there's a lot of room in the center. I recommend pushing everything to the walls. You'll have a nice space to hang out with friends. When you move into your first year dorm, your beds come at a level three height. This is the tallest height of that TV, unless you lost it. It fits perfectly with one of these dressers underneath that frees up the space in your room. You have a hutch right here along with the deck. The hutch is really useful because it contains a small little outlet that you can use to charge your phone, your computer, anything musical. Um, and you have a nice chair that rocks back a little bit. So on the walls, um, it's pretty easy to decorate the dorm uh, Put up whatever you would like, as long as it's not a fire hazard. Um, and you can use this rack on the top to pin different um, items that you'd like to add to your room. Also, right over here, we have a whiteboard and a cork board. You can use your cork board to tell your friends all about what you're doing on campus. Let's say you have some great event coming up. Use this cork board, start a flyer, and hopefully your friends will come. We also have a whiteboard, really good for communication. Say you have a job interview. If no one's really coming to your room, you can write job interview one to three. Please note this term. The first year class has a lot of every floor support for the study room, a fully equipped laundry room in each hall. For ideas on what and what not to bring, be sure to check out our website, which has plenty of information. Welcome to the University of Rochester and welcome home. So that's a quick overview of what we are, where we are. I want to point out on the map here, this is Lovejoy Hall. When this video was made, Lovejoy Hall was used for upper class students, largely sophomores. Lovejoy Hall is now part of the first year housing experience. So for perspective, roughly half of the first year class will live here on the hill, Susan B. Anthony and Genesee Hall, and then about a three minute walk away, the other half of the first year class will live here on the first year quad, which is Gilbert Hall, Hoeing Hall, Lovejoy Hall, and Tiernan Hall. Moving right along, Ashlyn, tell us a little bit about the residence halls and staffing. Yeah, so we have a lot of different kinds of staff members that are on campus to support all of our students. Um, we have a number of staff who specifically work with our first year students. And then we have other staff members who are really for everyone on campus. So area coordinators are professional staff members who all have graduate degrees and extensive training. And we are staff members who actually live on campus. And the reasoning for that is so that there is just support for students um, so that in case of a crisis or emergency situation, there's always a trained staff member who is able to respond quickly. Um, and that just provides an element of safety for our students. 
Area coordinators also work really closely with the rest of the staff who are there to support students who live in the buildings. So area coordinators supervise what we call graduate head residents. Those are graduate students who are studying something at the University of Rochester and who are also working within our residence halls to supervise the other levels of staff in the hall. So our graduate head residents are people who are in the hall. Um, they supervise the RAs. They could supervise the leadership ambassadors who are a role that is designed to create community and do programs and events in the hall to build community. They also supervise our resident advisors who are upper class students who live right on the floor. So in all of the first year buildings, there is an RA on every floor and that RA will have a personal relationship with each of the residents to be there for support. Um, they plan programs and events to get students out of their rooms to get to know each other and to make friends. They also do provide um, policy guidance. They support um, the University of Rochester's code of conduct. So they are there to enforce rules, but more so they are there to build community on the floor. The University of Rochester is also unique in the sense that our resident advisors work in a team of three people, um, three different roles that are there to support first year students specifically. So we have a position called DeLions and DeLions is actually a club that has been at the university for over 65 years. Um, so there's a long history of the DeLions and they are there to really build spirit in the hall. They engage the first year students who live in the buildings and they do social activities and they celebrate birthdays on the floor and they really help to create that feeling of home and they work really closely with the resident advisor for their floor. There's also a third position called the first year fellow and the first year fellows are a support system that focuses more on academics. So the first year fellows are upper class students who also live on the floor and work closely with the, the DeLion and the RA, but they focus more on providing opportunities to um, create good study habits, um, they can help students with academic resources, um, things that are more focused around academics. So you have that cohesive um, three person staff role that really does work to support the first year students in a lot of different capacities. We also have, oh, sorry, Dan. No, you go ahead. Okay, so we also have eco reps that live on the floors as well. Um, eco reps are really designed to give students an, an opportunity to be more involved in sustainability. So the eco reps are, um, they can be first years and upper class students. So it's an opportunity that you can get involved in your first semester on campus, which is really cool. And you also do get a two course credit. So you can learn more about sustainability and leadership on campus if you choose to pursue the eco rep position. Thanks, Ashley. The eco reps position will, the application is available in MyRoc when you deposit and choose to come to the University of Rochester and you get your housing contract and application. When you click on the housing contract and application, there will be more information about eco reps if that's something interesting to you and you want to apply to be an eco rep. Julianne, tell us a little bit about the kinds of rooms that we have. Sorry, I couldn't get myself unmuted. So um, we have a few different types of rooms that uh, students can live in. Um, doubles are the most common. Um, that would be you have one roommate. Uh, triples uh, also occur. So that would be that you have two roommates and there are a limited amount of single rooms. Um, so something to note for like the doubles and the triples would be that you do have your own bed, your own desk, your own wardrobe and so forth, your own dresser. So you're not sharing any of that. You're just sharing the room. Um, so it's also more opportunities to make friends. But if you are interested in living in a single, you will want to indicate that. But um, very important to note, it's a preference. It's by no means guaranteed. Uh, we don't have a lot of singles available. So that would be on the more rare occurrence. 
Um, so like I said before, all the rooms come with a full set of furniture. So that includes um, an extra long uh, twin bed, um, a desk, a chair, dresser, a wardrobe, and uh, waste and recycling bins. Um, every room um, comes equipped with an ethernet port. So if you want to plug in your computer to get the internet, um, that is a possibility. And there's also a cable jack. So if you want to plug your TV in to get um, the university cable, that's also an option. And we do have Wi-Fi available in all of our residence halls and all throughout campus. Um, so again, if you're interested in a single, just keep in mind that this is a limited opportunity and that's not guaranteed, but you would have to indicate it. Um, and then if you have any qualifying medical needs, we do have medical singles that are available. You would have to um, go through the Office of Disability Resources and the link is there um, on the slide. Uh, Dan, if you wanna go to the next one. Um, so we do have a few different living styles. Um, one of them uh, is all gender by random room. So this would be a hallway that has rooms for both men and women on the same corridor. Uh, there's separate bathrooms that are separated by um, each gender. Um, we also have all gender by uh, corridor. So this would be the building is all gender, but each of the corridors is designated by one gender. So that would be um, like the whole floor uh, is one gender, but the building that you would be living in would be all gender. Um, there's also single gender. So this would be the entire floor um, is the same. And then gender inclusive room. So this is a double room for students that are gender non-conforming um, or for two students of different gender identities who elect to live together. Um, uh, really important to note that this is not an assignment that we would do randomly. You would have to um, mutually consent in order to be placed in this type of room. And uh, these do occur on quarters that would have an all gender bathroom. And so finally, this one gets a little tricky in explaining, but um, we were a smoke-free campus, like a tobacco-free campus. And so one of the styles that we have is non-smoking. All of our buildings are non-smoking. However, um, if a student opts to live on the non-smoking floor, this means that they're committed to not smoking. And so um, they don't wanna have a roommate who elects to smoke in a designated area on campus or off campus that might come back like carrying the odor with them. Um, and so similar, the substance-free option, our first year buildings are substance-free uh, regardless of how old you are. However, if someone um, elects to live on the substance-free floor, this again is saying they wanna live in a community where everyone has vowed that um, they are pledging to be substance-free. So they don't want um, their roommates or hallmates to be coming back um, under the influence of substances. And then quiet study option. Um, this is similar. It's pledging that um, you want to live in a quiet environment where uh, there's 24 hour courtesy hours. So you're able to study in your room. Um, so this kind of uh, floor would be a little bit more quiet than like the average floor. Um, but it doesn't mean that the floor would be completely silent. It would just be a little bit more respectful with noise. Thanks, Julian. So how do we assign rooms? So when you do choose to attend the University of Rochester and submit your deposit, there we go, sorry. Um, you, you'll log into my ROC and you will be able to complete your housing and dining contract. These are due by June 1st for on-time consideration. So anything that's received on time is considered on time and treated equally. There's no advantage to turning it in on May 2nd or May 3rd. June 1st is June 1st. On time is on time. Late submissions after June 1st could potentially result, depending on the size of our class, in a delayed assignment. They could also potentially result in an assignment to a triple room. I wanna talk for a second about triples. We do assign triple rooms uh, as needed. Again, there's, a, there's sort of a valve based on the size of the class that will tell us how many triple rooms we need. Triple rooms do happen every single year. They are the largest rooms in our entire housing system. There's plenty of space in a triple room for three beds and three desks and three chairs and three dressers and three wardrobes and three human beings. Um, many students will opt 
to live in a triple room. Maybe they have two friends who they know from home or from camp or from the same sports team. And so the three of them will request to live each other with each other. We also have people who are assigned to triple rooms randomly, just sort of luck of the draw. If the class is a very large class, there may be people who submit their housing contracts on time and are still assigned to a triple room. Anyone who does live in a triple room receives a 20% discount off the top on our housing rate, and that has no impact on the financial aid award. So it will not adjust the financial aid award in any way whatsoever. It will simply be a 20% discount on the cost of the room for all three students living in the triple room. Um, I mentioned the eco reps earlier, so please do keep an eye on that. And room and roommate assignments are sent out in mid-July and we'll send you contact information now. How do you find each other? We don't ask you a lot of questions. We ask you if you would like to live on a single gender community or in an all gender community. We ask you your gender um, because we can't assume your gender based on your name and we can't assume your gender based on what your identity is. So we do ask you your gender. We do make housing assignments based on that. Any students who are gender non-conforming uh, in any way will reach out to us at housing at reslife.rochester.edu and we're gonna be really happy to have conversations with you about what the right place is for you to live based on your needs. Lots of roommates do come in indicating they wanna live with each other. If Julianne and Ashlyn are incoming first year students and they wanna to live together, they indicate that and we're happy to assign them together. If Julianne wants to live with Ashlyn but Ashlyn doesn't mention it, we will not assign them together. So any roommate requests are mutual. On the admissions class of 2026 webpage, there's lots of opportunity for you to start to get to know each other. Maybe you've met on recruiting trips, maybe you've met through social media and you might find somebody you wanna live with. So all of that happens apart from the housing application. There's been a little bit of work done studying uh, successful college roommate relationships. And it turns out that these 100 question eHarmony style uh, roommate matching programs don't have any better outcomes than not. What we find is that roommates who live together successfully do so when communication is open. And the RAs, the Delions, and the first year fellows work really hard with that from day one. We have about a 38 question uh, roommate agreement that every single student uh, sits down and starts to work through on the first day that they move in. So no one has to ask the awkward question about, can I borrow your toothpaste or not? We ask that question for you. We talk about guests in the room and noise in the room and the window open and the window closed and all those things get put out there on day one so the roommates start to communicate very well together. Um, and we revisit them about three weeks into the semester. It's a roommate agreement. It's supposed to be flexible. So we, we work carefully with that. But roommate assignments are generally random based on uh, your preference for all gender or single gender living and a request that you may have for substance-free quiet study or smoke-free living. I'm going to stop the share so you can see my face again. Uh, We've had a bunch of questions come in. So why don't I see if there's some questions that make sense for right now? Jules? Um, so looking at this, um, one student did ask if uh, on-campus housing is guaranteed for all four years. It's a great question. So historically speaking, we have typically been able to house students who want to be housed. Housing is not guaranteed for all four years. We have about 80% of our students live on campus for all four years. Uh, there's a two-year residency requirement. So first-year students and sophomores do indeed live on campus and we do indeed guarantee them a space if they'd like it. We find that by the sophomore year, it drops to about 75% of the sophomores live on campus. And by senior year, it's 60 to 65% of the seniors live on campus. We have a very robust off-campus living program, an off-campus housing coordinator, and a listing service. We have students, undergraduate students who live in the community and neighborhoods around campus who are neighborhood ambassadors, and they work with off-campus students 
landlords, neighborhood associations. Um, so no, we don't guarantee housing for all four years. About 60 to 65% of our seniors do still live on campus their senior year, but quite a number of students do choose to live off campus. And there's a lot of good opportunities in the neighborhoods immediately surrounding the campus. We're moving in right now to our lottery season. So people have said, how do you get to select where you live after the first year? It's a lottery system and it's based on class years. So rising soft, or excuse me, rising juniors and seniors do have first crack at it. We have some apartments on campus that are only for juniors and seniors. So they get to pick first. Rising sophomores get to pick after that. And um, then we kind of take a look at uh, transfer students or students who've missed the housing deadline we have some wait lists for those students, but we do tend to find housing for students who need it and we support those who wish to live off campus. There's also lots of opportunities after the first year for things like special interest housing. We have houses that are themed like the drama house and the Douglas leadership house. We have interest floors around anime, computing, sustainability and music. And we also have a fraternity and sorority community that has, I think, about a 20% membership. Most of the fraternities and sororities have either a house or a floor on campus, or some of them have um, houses off campus. So lots and lots and lots of choices for living in the upper class years. And the first years, we put you in first year housing and you live in traditional residence halls, uh, traditional corridors. But after the first year, there's much, much, much more choice. There's also some questions about um, the temperature in the rooms. If um, there's air conditioning, if there's thermostats uh, to adjust the temperature. Yeah, so in our, um, for first year housing, the only air conditioning is in Genesee Hall. Genesee is our newest residence hall and that was built with air conditioning. We have found that students really appreciate air conditioning um, into September, and then after that, it's kind of a non-issue in Rochester. Uh, we have beautiful fall and spring days and very cold winters. So Genesee does have air conditioning. Um, again, some students will be assigned to Genesee in a double or triple room randomly. Other students will be assigned to Genesee because they do have a disability accommodation that they registered with our um, Office for Disability Resources. Thermostats. Uh, in Genesee, you can control it. It's a fan system, so you can, you know, turn it up or turn it down. In the rest of our residence halls, it's essentially steam radiators, hot water radiators. Students will often open and close their windows and use that as a radi as a thermostat. We encourage them not to, um, but the, the buildings are set on a system. There are multiple thermostats in every single building that constantly monitor the temperatures, and a centralized system raises uh, the heat as needed based on an average of building temperatures. We do pretty well with heat. Students are generally very comfortable. And if they do complain that their room is too cold, we visit the room and we typically find that they put all their stuff in front of the radiator. So we move the stuff away from the heat system and all of a sudden the room is nice and toasty warm. Thank you. Um, let's see. So there's also some questions about when the housing and dining contracts um, will be available and if those will be in the Workday website. Olivia may have a better answer to this. I know that it, my rock, I believe, is what the admissions website is called. But as soon as you deposit and make the choice to come here, all of that information um, and application becomes available to you through my rock. Olivia, is that accurate? Um, I don't believe it's up quite yet. Um, I would assume it would be up soon. Um, and I would expect probably closer to our May 2nd deadline will probably be, be up. Yeah, typically it has been at the deposit day of May 2nd that that information becomes available. So there's lots of information there about what we are and what we have and what we offer. But the actual application comes after the deposit deadline. And I don't know, I think that is in, in a Workday platform. We, we refer to it as my rock, but it, it may be my Workday behind the scenes. Let me talk for a minute about um, special requests and disability accommodations. 
my staff and I are not uh, experts in medical health. We are not experts in mental health. We are not experts in any special needs or learning disabilities. And so we don't make any of those assessments. If a student has a need for a building with an elevator, access to a private bathroom, a single room, an emotional support animal. We aren't at all involved in that assessment. If you visit the Disability Resources website, which is rochester.edu slash disability, click on the information for students and click on out of classroom accommodations, it will take you to the site to request housing accommodation. They'll explain to you that you should send your documentation from your medical provider directly through their website and working with the University Health Service and the University Counseling Center, the professionals in those fields review the documentation and they simply make a recommendation to us. They will say, you know, student blank requires a building with an elevator. So we never find out any of your personal diagnostic information. Residential Life doesn't know any of that. We simply receive information from the Disability Resources Office indicating to us what type of living accommodation that you need or whether you are or are not approved to have a, an emotional support animal living with you. It's to respect your privacy, but it's also to make sure that people who are experts in these areas are the ones making the determinations. So please don't send any of your medical documentation to residential life. We will send it directly back to you. Uh, please do go to the Disability Resources website and apply for any special accommodation through that website. Other questions? Um, can you, there have been a few questions about microwaves. Um, and uh, can you talk a bit about the mini fridges that people can rent? Sure, when you get your information, there's a company called Microfridge. You can Google it, uh, I think. Uh, Microfridge is a company um, in central New York, a few hours away from here. And they provide a microfridge leasing service for our students if you're interested. You can rent a microfridge, which will be delivered to your room. And at the end of the year, it'll be collected and taken away. It is a waist high refrigerator with a very small freezer that holds like two tiny ice cube trays and a microwave attached to the top of it. Some students, primarily first year students will take advantage of the micro fridge rental program. Again, it's a third party. Um, we send you the information. We do have a relationship with them and they will deliver the micro fridge and pick it up at the end of the year. But a lot of other students will purchase a microwave or a portable refrigerator and find that in the long run, that's a more economical way to do it. On the ResLife website, there's a lot of information about what is and is not permitted in the rooms, which talks about the size of the refrigerator, that you can have what sorts of lamps and lighting are okay to have, um, all, all of that information, packing 101, what to bring, all that is there. But yep, there is certainly a microwave allowed in your room. Anything that is a heat generating cooking source, we like to say if it glows, it goes. So hot plates, toasters, toaster ovens, those are not permitted in the residence hall rooms. But every floor is gonna have some kind of a kitchen, kitchen facility available with an oven and a stove. So you can go cook in the shared kitchen. We just don't want you um, cooking with heat in your residence hall room. Um. And then someone asked if students who make their deposit sooner, um, if they get to be assigned to their housing first or if they're randomly assigned. It is absolutely random. And, and I will repeat again, on time is on time. So June 1st is on time. And there's no distinction between someone who applies for housing on May 18th or May 21st. On time is on time. If uh, what we will separate is students who don't make the June 1st deadline. Uh, students who don't meet the June 1st deadline will be assigned after the on-time students. But again, housing is guaranteed for all incoming first-year students. You will get a room. Um, and if you do have a recommended accommodation through the Office of Disability Resources, 
we will meet that accommodation as we are able. Um, so yeah, just be on time. There's no extra bonus points for being early, but on time is on time. Um, and then someone else asked what the move-in date is for the fall. So I believe, I'm going to look at my calendar here, hold. Um, it is two days, and it will be August 22nd and 23rd. Monday, August 22nd will be for international students um, and other students with special permission to move in that day, often traveling from great distance. But the general move-in day will be on Tuesday, August 23rd. Move-in is quite a party here. Uh, all of those people we talked about, the RAs and the first-year fellows and the DeLions, they will meet you. Parents, you'll like to know this, they will swarm your cars. They will unload your car in about two minutes flat and carry everything up to the room for you. So it's it's great. It's it moves fast. Uh, we, we get the cars in, we get the cars out, we bring the next cars forward to, to unload. There will be balloons and music and it's, it's fun. It's a fun move in day. But that day is on Tuesday the 23rd. Great, thank you. Um, and then someone else asked in terms of picking roommates, um, when they'll get that information of how to do that um, or is that something that they have to put in themselves? Again, we don't do any specific roommate matching through residential life. So as you connect with other members of the class of 2026 through social media platforms, and in particular, the class of 2026 Facebook page, you will see uh, roommate questionnaires that, that you all generate and develop. And so a lot of you do meet and find each other and let us know that you'd like to be paired as a roommate. Again, we honor those every time they are mutual requests. So it does have to be a mutual request and on the housing application, there is a place for you to list a preferred roommate if you have one, but otherwise we will make random roommate assignments again, based on gender and whether or not you prefer to live in a smoke-free quiet study or substance-free community. Let's see. Um, Dan, there's a question about heat in the buildings um, and the maintenance process. Heat and the maintenance process. How about you? Can you answer that, Ashley? Yeah, sure. So um, we do have this question specifically was asking if we have maintenance staff available over the weekend. And the answer is yes, we do have maintenance staff available over the weekend. Um, students should always call in maintenance requests to our maintenance number. Um, depending on you know, the severity of the issue, we will call in maintenance staff over the weekend. Um, if it was a heat issue, I can't specifically speak to what this was, um, but students should always call maintenance and there is always someone who will be able to help. There's a 24 hour a day dispatch. So um, you don't need to know this, but the number is three, four, five, six, seven, which is easy. When you get here, that'll be published all over the place so you can see what number to call. That dispatcher might make the determination that, um, thanks for letting us know that there's a, a light out uh, and they'll send someone in the morning to fix it. That maintenance dispatcher may also determine at two o'clock in the morning that, oh, we got to get people out there because a pipe broke, there's water. And we will dispatch people 24 hours a day, seven days a week for emergencies. So again, usually it's pretty quick. Um, calling during the day, our, our maintenance mechanics in every single building we have a dedicated maintenance mechanic so if you live in Susan B Anthony you're going to get to see this guy named Chris and Chris is going to be all over the building and he's going to be keeping things fixed and tidy and uh, lights changed and doors working um, so we do have dedicated staff in each building and you'll recognize their faces because it'll be the same people um, on your floor. It'll be the same people cleaning the bathrooms and the lounges and the hallways on your floor every single day. Uh, you'll get to know them. Some of our housekeeping staff, we call them ESWs, environmental service workers. Some of the ESWs put out holiday decorations. A lot of times the RAs and the floors will, um, you know, sort of pass 
pass a hat and buy a little gift or cookies or a happy thing for their ESW because they appreciate so much what that person does for them. So there's a lot of maintenance um, easily accessible anytime that anytime there's a need. Um, I answered a few of these in the chat, but there have been a lot of questions about if students can preference buildings and what the difference is between the first year hill and, and the quad. So there's not a specific way to preference a building. I can tell you that um, the quiet study living option is in Susan B. Anthony. So if you did preference quiet study, you would live in Susan B. Anthony. And I can tell you that the uh, substance-free community, do I have this right? Backwards, yeah. Ashlyn, what's in Lovejoy? <laughs> we shifted them a little bit this year. Uh, um, yeah, we didn't free, have... yeah, Substance free is in, in Lovejoy. So you, if you requested substance free, you'd be in the first year quad. Students who live in Susan B. Anthony and Genesee will tell you they never want to live anywhere else. It's the best thing ever. And ha ha, quad, you got the crummy place to live. And the people who live in the quad will say, you don't know what you're talking about. The quad is terrific. We love the quad. Uh, the quad is beloved by many, many students. It has the largest rooms. Um, Susan B. Anthony has the biggest windows. Susan B. Anthony has um, easy access to Hillside Market, which is a mini market market that's open until one and two in the morning and a major dining hall Danforth Dining Center so you can put on a robe and slippers and go to breakfast at Danforth. Um, if you live in Gilbert you got to put on your jacket and boots to go outdoors to go get breakfast at Wilson Commons or Douglas. So I think it's a pretty split thing and students have a lot of loyalty for where they do live. Um, it's hard for me to say one is better than the other but they're both at the absolute center of campus. And in between the first year hill and the first year quad is Wilson Commons, the student center and uh, the Gergen Athletic Center. So all of the things that you wanna do, whether it's socializing or athletics um, are equally accessible from either the quad or the hill. Thank you. There's also a lot of questions about if students can request a triple. You can absolutely request a triple. You can absolutely request a triple. Sometimes we have triple requests <clears throat> from three people who do want to live together, but maybe you don't know two other people. You just want to live in a triple because you frankly would appreciate the discount. It's a lot of money to save, or you just think that that feels like a good way to live and uh, you'd like to have a chance to meet two more people. You can request a triple and we have many, many students who do. I hope there's a session coming up and uh, Olivia may know this uh, for dining. I do see there's some questions about dining plans. I can tell you that all students who live in campus residence halls are required to have a meal plan. First year students have a couple of choices for meal plans, but I, I don't want to address that directly because I don't want to give incorrect information. There are plans that are primarily um, swipes all you can eat so you can go to the Danforth Dining Center or the Douglas Dining Center and um, go as many times as you want and eat as much as you want or you can have a meal plan that is primarily declining which is a dollar balance that reduces as you use it and you can use that um, at the Danforth Dining Center, Douglas Dining Center, the Pitt, Wilson Commons, Starbucks and any of the other um, grab and go and small dining facilities around campus. So there'll be a lot of information. Um, go to the dining website, watch the video of this morning's dining presentation, or there may be another one coming up in a week or so if you wanna log in for that. Dining is really responsive if you email them any questions. They, they can talk very specifically about their plans and if you have a special dietary need. We do have um, allergy-free zones uh, or nut-free dining kosher and halal options, vegan options. So if you do have special dietary needs, there are lots and lots of choices that the dining staff can help you understand a little bit more. Um, there's another question about uh, first year students and special interest housing, um, if they're allowed to live there. Um, I know DLH, there's some opportunity, but if you wanna speak any more on that. Sure. Um, Several years ago, 
the, the dean of the college made a determination. I, I think he was wise when he made this determination that uh, we, we're not gonna have first year students affiliate in their first semester. So the short answer is no. Uh, special interest housing is not something that first year students are eligible for. Fraternities and sororities, we used to have rush and pledging in the fall semester. We now have a deferred rush process. So first year students can't join fraternities or sororities until the spring semester. Any of our special interest housing programs, whether it's the music interest floor or the drama house, um, you can attend their events, you can go to their meetings, you can become an associate member, but it is not until the sophomore year that you're eligible to live there. Julianne mentioned the Douglas Leadership House. The Douglas Leadership House is themed housing that focuses on the African and African American experience with a very specific um, emphasis on leadership. There will be a very small number of spaces in the Douglas Leadership House for first year students. If that's something you're interested in, you should speak with your admissions counselor. Um, I know that the Douglas Leadership House is working with admissions uh, to determine the, the first year students who live in BLH. That'll be new this year. And Douglas Leadership House has 22 students total, um, and they're looking to potentially have four first year students live there. So it's a very small thing. And all of the DLH events are open to everyone. So even if you're not one of the very small number of first year students who do live in DLH, there's lots and lots of It's across the street from Lovejoy. And there's lots of events that you can attend and participate in. Um, let's see, I'm bouncing around, sorry. Um, can students loft their beds? Great question. So um, the, the answer is we will loft your bed for you. So I don't know there's many colleges left. Some parents in my generation might remember lofts that got built out of found lumber and cinder blocks. And it's a good lucky thing that they didn't collapse on the people that were trying to climb up on them. Those days are long gone. The furniture that we do have in the residence halls can be lofted, it can be bunked. The students in the video talked about you know, the different levels. So in the area offices, every residence hall has an office for their complex. And so you could go to the area office and you can request for your bed to be lofted. Lofted means your bed is about five feet up in the air and your desk can fit underneath it. That gives you more floor space. Bunked means two beds are bunked together. So there's a top bunk and a bottom bunk. Most rest students do keep their beds at what we call level three, which is uh, where the, the dresser can slide underneath it. But absolutely, positively, we are happy to help you uh, rearrange and readjust your furniture and put your bed at any height you like. But you cannot bring in um, homemade lofting kits. They're just too dangerous. Um, I think we touched upon this a little bit earlier, but there are a few questions about um, for upperclassmen, um, if you can't afford to live off campus, if you're able to stay on campus all four years, um, or if there's a point that like upperclassmen are kicked out. Great. Um, so I, I got to refer those sorts of questions to the financial aid office in particular, but what I can tell you in broad general terms is if you live on campus, the financial aid office has a number that they use that is the cost of housing and dining for students who live on campus. If you live off campus, the financial aid office has a different number that they use for the cost of housing and, and food and commuting. And that gets factored into your financial aid award. And if you're from the Rochester area and you live at home with your immediate family, which is an option, the financial aid office has a cost number that they use for that. So your financial aid package will be adjusted based on the cost of your housing and food. You should speak very specifically with them about your own situation, but financial aid does indeed um, adjust packages based on the cost of, of housing and food. 
I see somebody asking me if first year students will only live with other first year students. And yes, absolutely with an asterisk. So um, we have a first year housing program. All first year students live in first year housing, um, always. Uh, upper class students do not live in first year buildings except for those three people that we talked about. So on every first year hall, there's going to be an RA who's an upper class student, a DeLion who's probably a sophomore, and a first year fellow who's an upper class student. They provide leadership, mentorship, resources, and support for the first year students. So they are very intentionally placed in first year housing, but it is otherwise entirely first year students in first year housing. Um, so there's a question of, and I think you can answer this broadly as well. If someone requests to live on a substance free hall, um, what would happen um, if they're not assigned to one? Uh, that hasn't happened. We've had enough space for students who, who wanted that option. So I, I do hope that if that's something that you do want, um, that we are able to meet that need. Um, I will tell you that, um, don't tell the U of our students this because it would hurt their feelings, but they're really not crazy wild partiers here. So even, <laughs> even on the communities that are not substance free, um, they are serious and focused and studious students who are interested in um, getting lots and lots of experience and leadership and uh, academic opportunities. So again, I'm not gonna lie to you uh, or your family members that we don't see alcohol and drugs on campus because we do. They're in every community everywhere, but our students are not uh, raging partiers. This is, a, this is a pretty serious student body. That said, my original answer, if you do request to live in substance-free housing, it's quite likely that you're gonna get that request. Um, and what are the gates that parents would typically be present on campus um, with the 823 move-in? Um, are they present? Yeah, I believe that the, the parent orientation program, and again, you can visit the orientation website for more information. Parents typically stay for two days. So there's typically a the 23rd and 24th, there will be parent programs. Um, I haven't seen the schedule for this August, but there's often something on the second day that's sort of a um, kiss and cry farewell opportunity to say, I'll see you at break. But yeah, it's a two day program for a parent family orientation. And they also have opportunities for younger siblings. So if you bring your younger kids with you, they don't have to come around and listen to academic discussions. There's fun stuff for them to do as well. Um, let's see. Um, someone asked if they can move in earlier than the 22nd. No, in general, no. If you are uh, an athlete and in particular a football player or a soccer or volleyball player. I think those are fall sports that um, that come in early. We'll receive that information from your coach and you'll get to move in at the time that your team is permitted to move in. Uh, you'll also get some information about a program called You Are Foot. You are a sort of pre-orientation camping program. Um, if you're a You Are Foot participant, you'll come a couple of days early but just drop yourself off, drop your stuff off, and then you'll head off on the camping trip and come back on regular move-in day. But in general, um, you can't come early. Somebody asked if we can specify the race or country of our roommate, and the answer to that is absolutely not. Um, we do have a question uh, for um, US residents if they would be interested in living with an international student. So somebody could generically indicate that they'd like to live with an international student to really have that experience. But in general, no, absolutely not. And speaking of international students, we do have continuous housing through the semester break for international and domestic students who wanna stay with us through the semester break. We call it winter stay. There'll be more information about that 
Sometimes students have to move to a different room if we're closing your residence hall for the semester break, but there will be an opportunity for students who do need to stay. Remember, we've got about 4,300 students who live on campus. And during the winter stay period, we have maybe two or 300 students who do stay with us. So the campus becomes very, very quiet. Services are more limited. I mean, there, there obviously are people around, uh, and there, there's food and libraries and things like that, but it's a very quiet time on campus. And so we do sometimes try to move students um, to a more central location because the campus is generally so empty during that period, but there's an absolute opportunity. Um, there is a question about um, during the orientation where parents stay, um, if they're allowed to stay on campus or if they have to be off campus. Yeah, parents have to stay in, in a hotel, an Airbnb, or with local friends. Parents, it's, it's not appropriate for parents to be staying on campus in their student rooms. Students can have guests. You know, you can have a, your, your younger brother or sister who maybe wants to come and visit for the weekend. I mean, all those things are possible, but during opening and move in, it's, it's really not appropriate for parents to stay in the room. There's typically a roommate or two. Um, they're trying to get a fresh start. They're trying to get to know their neighbors. And so mom or dad um, hanging out in the residence hall is, is, it's not the thing. So you're gonna need a hotel, an Airbnb or a local friend who you can stay with. Okay, I would say we probably have enough time for probably one more question. So if there's another question that anybody wants to ask, please ask it now. Um, I'll just say there's so much more information coming. We really wanted to give you an overview of what it's like to live on campus. Our students are generally very, very satisfied with campus housing. They like living here. They're highly engaged. Um, we have really, really active floors with a lot going on. RAs, fellows, and Deliance plans lots of activities. Um, sometimes roommates don't get along. RAs are trained to help them mediate and negotiate those things. We come back to the living agreement and, and revisit it and review it. Uh, when we need to do room changes, we can do them. But I have to tell you that our staff is really terrific. Our students are generally really patient with one another. And we don't do that many room changes because more often than not, people work it out. University of Rochester is a, a, a pretty exciting and active community. And living on campus for at least the first two years of your time here is a really important part of that. So, you know, we do hope that you email us questions, um, talk to current students, reach out to the, uh, I'm forgetting the name, Olivia, if they're student ambassadors or the, the admissions meridians who you may have contact with and ask them firsthand, what's it like living on campus and what's your experience? Because I know that they're really going to uh, be thrilled to talk to you about it. Additionally, you can um, contact our admissions office and we can get you in contact with um, the folks from Residence Life as well if you have any more questions. Um, however, we have reached the time for our session today. I want to thank everybody for participating. Thank you for all your great questions. Um, we're so excited again to have you, and a huge thanks to Dan, Julianne, and Ashlyn today for helping us out. Yay! Um, everybody have a great day. It was so good to have this session with you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.